What's going on everyone, it's Semp. Welcome back to the channel. Here's my video for Easter eggs in the Infinity Saga. We're doing 23 of them to symbolize the 23 movies. So this is going to be a big one here. From all the way in the beginning of Iron Man, all the way to the end at Avengers Endgame, here are some of the most interesting or Easter eggs you might have just not known of. So let's dive into it, but subscribe if you haven't yet. Guys, we're almost at 100 here. Help me get there and leave a like if you do like the video. That activity does not go unnoticed on the page. But other than that, let's get into it. Let's go. So number one, to kick off the whole video, we're starting with Spider-Man Homecoming. There's some iconic MCU figures in that movie. You can actually see Howard Stark here behind Peter as he's walking to class. And then in Peter's classroom, you can actually see Bruce Banner. His portrait is with other scientists who are known for their great work in the MCU. It's a nice little tie-in for our spider friend who's still being held hostage by Sony in the way. Free Spidey. But number two, in this scene here in Iron Man 3, you can actually see that Tony runs into Yinsen years before he sees him in Iron Man 1. So that's why Yinsen makes it a point to say this. That's right. Smile. We met once, you know. At a technical conference in Bern. Don't remember. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. And number three, it looks like Mantis was actually intended to be Star-Lord's sister, at least in the early development of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Now, that idea was mainly scrapped and not mentioned in the film really, but they are still related in a way. Peter, of course, is the biological son of Ego, and Ego has been all across the universe, so Mantis is actually the daughter to Ego. Mantis was found by him as a larva, and he kept her in his company because he knew that she would be useful to him, and we see that in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. So let's see if this connection means anything further into the future. Now, number four, in Avengers Endgame, Petty mentions a Braddock. Now, Brian Braddock is actually Captain Britain, and because we know that alternate timelines exist now in the multiverse, it's safe to say that Captain Britain is somewhere out there in the multiverse, possibly that timeline that the Avengers traveled to. But the notion of this idea gets better because we were told that we would see known MCU characters in different ways in Doctor Strange 2 and the Multiverse of Madness. So an alternate version of them, could that possibly mean that we see the introduction of Brian Braddock, the Britain Captain America? And number five here, the MCU does have its own designated reality number 616. Now that places it within the greater Marvel Universe, which means that there is a cosmic link between these cinematic versions that we see in the movies and the comic book counterparts. That connection was further emphasized in Thor The Dark World when Dr. Selvig lays out the understanding of the reality on a giant chalkboard. Among his other scribblings, including a map of the Nine Realms, he writes the key phrase, 616 Universe. Now, since this second Thor movie, it's been mentioned a couple times in the MCU. You can also see the number 616 in Avengers Endgame when Scott Lang finds himself in the storage facility. That's his storage spot number. Also in Far From Home, Mysterio mentions this Earth as 616. And on to number 6. In Infinity War, Doctor Strange views 14,605,000 realities. 14, 1 in 4, meaning the first family, and 4 for the Fantastic Four. And in the Fantastic Four comic issue number 605, Reed Richards is actually building a device that would try and allow him to view all of the future outcomes for the Fantastic Four team. Sounds a little similar to Doctor Strange, right? Also, when the Guardians first enter the movie, the song choice by the Russos was from a list that James Gunn gave them, and they chose the Rubber Band Man out of the entire list, which is actually a nickname that the thing uses for Reed Richards in the comics. And on to number 7, even though this movie doesn't get talked about much, it actually does have some pretty cool easter eggs. So in The Incredible Hulk, the owner of the pizza shop where Bruce Banner goes into is actually the same actor who voices the 1966 Hulk cartoon, and his name is Paul Souls. You can also see in number 8 here that Captain America is actually in the background of the deleted scene where Bruce Banner plans on unfortunately killing himself. But the Hulk ends up saving him in that scene. It's also further referenced in the 2012 Avengers movie. Number 9 here, the iconic Captain America number 1 issue is actually featured on one of Agent Coulson's trading cards. And remember, it's a vintage set. You're mint. Number 10, this Ant-Man and Hawkeye team up in Captain America Civil War is actually the recreation of a famous comic book scene from Avengers issue 223. 
as Ant-Man hops on Hawkeye's arrow and flies into action exactly how it showed in this movie. And number 11, some of you might have known this, some of you might have not if you've only seen the movie once or maybe haven't caught every detail of it. But Doctor Strange's name was actually dropped in the Winter Soldier by Hydra's Jasper Sitwell. Now how did they know of him and why were they monitoring him as a potential threat? Some things we'll never truly find out, but that would have been something really cool to see. Now number 12, in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, Starhawk, who is played by Sylvester Stallone and his team of old school Ravagers are actually the original team from the Guardians in the comic books. Now, albeit with significantly differing background stories here in the MCU, this crew of the Guardians first appeared in Marvel Super Heroes issue number 18, and the initial roster consisted of Vance Astro, Martin X Tanaga, Captain Charlie 27, and of course, Man popping, y'all! Number 13, at the end of Age of Ultron, Hawkeye's newest child is born and the name of the shirt says Nathaniel Petro Barton. In honor of who saved Clint Barton's life in the Battle of Sokovia, Petro Maximoff, otherwise known as Quicksilver. And number 14 here, the first Ant-Man movie is all about introducing us to the Quantum Realm and in one of those scenes you can actually see a distinct outline of Janet Van Dyne, who is of course Hank Pym's wife and the original Wasp. For number 15, the usage of the stones by Thanos goes overlooked sometimes by most people, so we know that the stone glows to show which stone Thanos is actively using, right? Well, the combination of stones gets really interesting, and we can see that Thanos uses the soul stone here to search for the real soul of Doctor Strange's multiplication spell. Once found, the power stone is used to eliminate the copies, but to highlight one other, in this scene here, Thanos uses both the power stone and the space stone, now the space stone was to pull apart her robotic limbs and the power stone was of course to enforce the pain. If you actually look at Thanos gauntlet in the movie it's pretty cool to see the combinations that he uses so I just wanted to point a couple of those out. Now number 16 here, in the films Morgan Stark is named after who Tony states was the eccentric uncle for Pepper Potts. Now however the name Morgan is a reference to Tony's cousin in the comics was actually known for stealing Stark Industries secrets and selling them to the highest bidder. Which makes naming Tony's kid after him a pretty odd choice to say the least, but it's a cool thing we got to see that in the MCU as a reference. Now number 17, during this same briefing with Nat, at the end of it, Carol Danvers turns to James Rhodes and wishes him good luck. We've missed 5 years of character development in the time since Thanos snapped, so it's not certain but it could be an indication that Carol and Rhodey, both of whom share a Air Force background could actually be in a relationship in the future of the MCU. In the comics, Captain Marvel and War Machine do date for some time. And number 18, when Steve Rogers and Tony travel to the 1970s in New Jersey, Tony encounters his father Howard Stark, right? But what's more important in this scene is that it includes an appearance from Howard's loyal butler, Jarvis. This is significant because the MCU has always been shy of acknowledging Marvel's TV shows that it prefers to treat it kind of awkward like a first cousin. But this inclusion of Jarvis in Endgame is definitely interesting to say the least, and it looks like with the introduction of the multiverse, it probably looks like those shows are definitely connected just in another universe. And on to number 19 here, this movie has so many easter eggs, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, so here's another. Stan Lee is actually Uwatu the Watcher. Now Uwatu first appeared in the Fantastic Four issue number 13, and was assigned to watch over Earth from his home in the blue area of the moon. We'll be seeing our first Watcher in true explanatory form here in the Disney Plus show What If. The Watcher in What If is played by Jeffrey Wright and he'll be narrating the entire series. Almost done here, number 20. So in Thor Ragnarok, the number 142 actually has a pretty important meaning. Listen carefully when Thor arrives on Sakaar and you'll hear Tessa Thompson's Valkyrie being referred to as Scrapper 142. And why 142? Well, that's when the most famous version of the Valkyrie character debuted in the comics. On to number 21, if you watch Captain Marvel and notice this character right here, she may look familiar and that's because this is Minerva, and it's played by Gemma Chan. Now this actor will be having a huge role in the MCU moving forward, playing Cersei in the Eternals, and that comes out in February 2021, if we don't get another slight delay. Now in the comics, Cersei and the Black Knight become part of the Avengers team, so it's going to be interesting to see their dynamic as the main characters in the Eternals movie. 
Now for number 22, if you haven't noticed, the Avengers Tower is hard to be seen after the first Avengers movie. However, in Doctor Strange, you can see it twice. The first being after the establishing shot of Manhattan, the tower is pretty hard to miss. And you can also see it in the mirror dimension when it begins folding in on itself like Inception. You can see the Avengers Tower along the rest of the other Manhattan skyscrapers. A nice little connection to show that Doctor Strange is still in the MCU and the Avengers Tower still exists. And number 23, last but not least, the shot of the Avengers assembling before the time heist in Endgame was a quick nod to Tony's arc reactor in the first Iron Man movie and foreshadowing the funeral scene where Pepper puts the reactor afloat in the lake. But that's all the easter eggs for this video, there's so many in the Infinity Saga and I'm sure you can find more every time you go back and watch the movies. Even subtle nods like this to license plates numbers showing comic issues like this one in Far From Home, referencing the Amazing Spider-Man series. So let me know if you did like this video and make sure to stay up to date with me on all my announcements such as new podcast episodes and of course new videos. So click that notification bell so you don't miss any new ones and go follow me on all my social medias specifically Twitter, at another Marvel G, where I am most active. The links are all in the description down below. But other than that, I just want to say thank you. I'm another Marvel guy, and I'll catch y'all in a blip.